What's up, everybody? This is uh, Future from Assassins, Warriors of Light, Washington, D.C., and uh, making another video log, uh, the one about mentorship. Got a lot of good responses. <clears throat> Had a lot of people reach out to me and um, met a lot of people recently at events that were telling me how much that video impacted them. So for me, these, these videos are not like something I'm always going to be doing, but just something that when it feels right, I think it's time to do another one. And um, a lot of things have been happening lately, like in the dance scene and just in my life in general that have kind of brought me to the place where I feel like I need to kind of be a voice for some of the people that, uh, that aren't being represented and, and just a voice in general for people to hear what I think um, about what's going on in the scene. Today, I want to talk about three things mainly. The first thing is trends in the dance scene. The second thing is the tradition of being yourself. And then the third thing is the responsibility of leaders or people in the limelight in the dance community and how that affects everybody. Um, as far as trends, like, the dance scene in general has many trends. There's many things that are the popular way of doing something um, and the way that most of the young generation, they, they see people doing things in this way and they believe that that's the only way that they have to do it. Uh, in the popping scene, there's been millions of trends. Um, it depends what city you were from. It depends what decade you were dancing in. And in the 60s, they danced a certain way and there was a certain trend in Oakland, a thing that they liked, that they preferred, a preference. San Francisco had a preference, Richmond had their thing. Um, as the dance traveled throughout the different cities, like everyone had their trend or their, um, their thing that people really liked about it, you know. And if I think about when I started, like in the late 90s, the way poppers were moving at that time to get someone to cheer for you, to be like, oh, that's dope. There was two things. One was blow up moves, because we were dancing with a lot of b-boys at that time, so you had to have big, spectacular moves. You couldn't really go in and do like a beat kill after a b-boy did a head spin. It didn't really make sense, and it wasn't as powerful. So there was a lot of blow ups. That was kind of trendy. And also a lot of like funny characters. Like if you did something silly or you had like a girly character or something goofy, like, or you did a move with your face and it was like kind of funny. You know, there were, um, that's what it was like. That's what we all were trying to be like in the 90s. And, and then things changed. Like in the early 2000s, then you had this big influence from the Electric Boogaloos and at that time like we were all trying to dress just like them. We had the Hush Puppies, Hush Puppies had to match your, your derby cap or your do-rag and like you had to have some, some dress clothes, you had to have khakis, you had to have a dress shirt, like there was even an era after that where it turned into jeans with Hush Puppies with short sleeve like polo striped collared shirts. like. So trends even in clothing are a thing in the dance scene, but the early 2000s was a lot of like, we were trying to be like the electric boogaloos, and this era was dope, just like any of the other eras. Um, after that, around 2007, like, when I moved to California, there was a big influence from this speed control thing. And around the time when I was doing Just a Boo 2007, like that thing was was popular to have the uh, that little delay, that speed control, you know. Then there's been a lot of mini trends too. Like trends aren't always something that everyone in the dance scene does. Sometimes there's small ones like the finger tut craze, right? Even now, tutting is like this new trend. And even in America, like strutting is becoming a thing and a bit overseas, but not so much. But these small trends, they usually come and then they go when the next popular thing comes in. And 
the, the whole point of just being aware of all of these different trends is that we don't have to follow the trend, right? Like, as a new dancer, you should be aware that you don't always have to do what's popular and what's cool. One of the biggest trends right now today is this is the art of the beat freak, you know, or the beat kill. So like musically, the trend right now is to accent the music, you know, and there's so many different ways to be musical, you know, that it's, it's interesting that people pick just that one way to do it, you know, accenting one sound at a time. Uh, that sound comes, uh, that sound comes, you know, and it's cool, like, I mean, it's dope. People that can use instrumentation and be musical in that sense, that's great, but there's, there's a lot of ways to do anything. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to be musical. There's a lot of different ways to please the crowd. There's a lot of different ways to please yourself in your movement. There's a lot of different styles, and there's so much out there that it's important that we remember this one thing all my teachers carry this tradition and this thing has been passed on to me it's the tradition of being yourself so in this dance the idea to be yourself is one of the most important things you can be because dance is our tool to help us be the best person that we can be it's not necessarily our tool to become popular or to do what everybody's doing it's the thing that gives us freedom it's the thing that allows you to be okay with being different. It's okay to be different in this dance. And that's the thing that makes it so amazing is you can be completely different than the next person and that's okay, you know. My style compared to Rashad is completely different. My style compared to Damon Frost is completely different. And Damon's style is completely different than anyone else. These are all like one of a kind dancers, um, not really cookie cutter. These are people that are just one of a kind. And I think for the, the younger generation, it's important to look at, at the older guys, for example, and see that none of these guys look the same. And that's, what's, that's what made it so cool. You know, if, you, if anyone's been able to go to the Popper's Picnic or the, the Boogaloo Barbecue, when you go to these things, it's such a great experience because you're looking around and seeing guys that are like hidden gems guys that no one else looks like you know and sometimes I wonder if these guys would even like pass through a prelim in an event today because of what's popular and what's trendy now the idea is that no time period and no trend is greater than another what's cool is cool now that's dope but the things that were cool before are still cool and the things that are going to be cool in the future will still be cool but the idea of being yourself in this dance is just like one of the biggest keys to doing this thing. So trends in the dance scene are occurring, like being aware of them, super important. The, the tradition of being yourself, we got to carry this thing on because if we don't, it's just going to become so cookie cutter and so mainstream that it's just not going to be fun to watch, you know. This thing's so cool because it's so diverse. It allows so many cultures and so many things to be represented. And it's sad when like, you see people in contests today not making it through the prelims and not doing well in the contest because they're not trendy. They're not popular. Like, a lot of these contests are becoming popularity contests. And that kind of brings me to my third topic, which is like, the responsibility of the leaders like the younger generation is looking to the leaders like and you don't even have to be an OG to be a leader people that are judges at events are leaders people that are throwing events are leaders people that you know are just popular on YouTube you're a leader in a sense because people are looking to you so the responsibility there becomes very high if you're a judge it's your responsibility to be the best judge that you can be. Not to just have an opinion on your preference and vote for who you're cool with or who's popular, but to have an educated opinion. That means to understand as much as possible, even things outside of what you do, so that when you see it, you can say, oh, that's different than me, but it's cool too, and it deserves some representation, and it deserves some worth in this culture, so we're gonna, let this thing be represented. 
and not to just shun it out. And sadly, I see a lot of that happening. And I think an important thing to remember is that when you get in the position of a leader, be a judge, be a teacher, be someone on a panel discussion, someone throwing events, it's your job now to one-up the standard. Like, being a great dancer doesn't make you a great teacher, it doesn't make you a great judge, but being in that situation should push you to being a great teacher, a great judge, a great speaker about dance, uh, a great cipher head. Like, we need to be always pushing these situations where you become a judge or you become, you're throwing your own event, these things are just tools to help you one-up your skills. So that's how the learning never stops. When you're in the teacher position, you're still supposed to be learning. And what happens is people get stuck in what's popular, they get stuck in what works for them, and they just stagnate out, you know? And then the bad thing is when they start telling other people that are growing and learning and implementing many things into their dancing, they start saying, oh, well, that's, uh, that's cool, but that's just, that's not popping, or that's not this, or that's not that. And that's where, like, there's a problem there, because you have a very narrow-minded view of what this thing is and what it can be, and not an open view, and allowing many things in. So the responsibility is huge for all of us, to keep one-upping what we do in these situations. You know, it's, it's sad when someone doesn't get through a prelim or, or loses a battle that they maybe should have won or they could have been represented better or given a bit more respect. It's sad to see it for them, but the saddest thing is that for the entire community as a whole, it doesn't allow the full representation of what this thing is. If you put just the people that you're cool with through the prelim, those are the only people that are going to get seen. And how are the people that have different approaches that are also dope going to get any visibility, you know, and, and any recognition in what they do? It forces people to either leave the community or find alternative things to do. Some people, like, just stick with theater. Some people, you know, find different outlets. For me, I'm finding that a lot of people want me to start speaking more about these things and this is kind of my outlet when I don't get the full representation that I feel like I start saying, okay, well let me start talking about these things and just throw things out there like putting these ideas out so that people can start thinking about them, people can start brainstorming these things and and just see what it is that's that's really going on and see what maybe needs to change or or maybe not but at least the ideas are out there for everyone to think and talk about because this thing is bigger than just one person it's bigger than being popular my teacher Junius he always says no one's bigger than this dance and basically that means that you know no one's greater than this this dance culture than this community the community comes first all of us comes first before the self and that's just a really important lesson that I luckily learned through having great mentors like Rashad and Junius and, and others. And this thing is, um, yeah, monumental. Like just placing the community before yourself. And if you do that, like a lot of stuff just goes. The ego goes, like the ignorance goes, the hate goes away because you see that it's bigger than than right here and right now. It's bigger than just you. It's, it's about all of us and continuing on all of these great traditions. This tradition of dance, of celebrating music, you know, of celebrating diversity. Like, this is what is so beautiful about this dance. And I think right now, the state of the, the dance scene, and like I speak more specifically towards the popping scene, is that I think we can do a bit of a better job of, of representing more communities and you can see it even within the scene because you have events like the Book of Styles in DC that we throw. That popped up. You have Jack of All Trades in Montreal. You have uh, Pop in Progress in Singapore. And there's others. There's other events. So you can see the need for it because people are starting to create things now. Like I'm saying, these outlets where they feel like they don't have anywhere to go or anything to express. 
they start throwing events that are geared for for seeing more styles or for being more open to different things and I think that's a sign already of the direction that we're going you know but if um, if me saying any of this can help out and speed up that process then then so be it if not like hopefully this video can just inspire some people in, in different ways to do different things and not be scared to be yourself like if you're one of those younger generation dancers that feels like every time you try to do something different like people don't understand or they don't treat you fairly like I've been there plenty of times and it still happens to me today so like just keep doing what you're doing like <clears throat> people will support what you do eventually and the funniest thing is like usually five years later what you're doing becomes okay and then the popular people can do it too like it, it's happened plenty of times to a lot of different people like Rashad is is one of those people like just such a trendsetter you know like doing things that people weren't doing five to ten years before and then now in the scene people can mix in like house dance and mix in hip-hop into their popping you know it's it's just it's just the times, it's just the trends, it's just the popularity contest, it's just whatever it is, but let's all remember that this thing is so much bigger than the individual, it's about all of us, it's not about being cool, it's not about being popular, dance is our tool to better ourselves and the people around us, so if we can keep that in mind, like I think we can keep growing in the right direction, and yeah, I think that might be all I all I have for this time. So thanks for listening. Future Assassin's Crew DC. Peace.